Hello, my friends. Time for another fantastic Revit tip. Today's Revit tip is a request I had just the other day for a cable railing. We've got a lot of picket railings going on, and I've actually made perimeter fences with boards um, as my um, as a, a railing. You can make perimeter fences around your property for residential, commercial, whatever. But the request was a cable railing to be used interior and um, at, at a balcony or going up a stair. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make a Revit tip on how to do that. It's quite simple. You will see. But the alas, we have a Revit tip for you anyway. All right. So without any further ado, I am going to share my screen with you. I'm going to share it with you. Okay, so here we is in Revit. Hey, my, my shirt is doing a, maybe you can't see it, but on my screen, my shirt's doing a moire thing. But it might not be visible to you guys anyway. So here we are in our little 3D building, okay? And I'm just going to show you how to make a railing that is a cable railing. So here we go. We can use any railing to start. So if you just come up here to the railing tool on the architecture tab, click on railing, and does it matter which one you have um, selected? Let me see. Here is a handrail. There's a pipe rail, but that's not what we want. I'm going to start with something like a residential handrail, completely different than um, what you typically see. Mm -hmm. So what do we got? I'm just going to draw one right there. There's a line. <clears throat> and check the box. Bam. We've got a residential rail going on here. Beautiful residential rail. Okay. It's really kind of long. And so I'm going to shorten it up a little bit so we can enjoy seeing it a little closer when we zoom. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. Okay. We're going to convert this thing into a cable railing that we don't have one in our project. We don't have one. We need one. So here we go. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click on this thing and we're going to go look at the properties of it. I'm going to move my face the other side of the screen so I can get some work done around here. It's hard to, hard to find good help, you know? Okay, here we are. When I click on my um, the railing, I go to edit the type. I don't want to edit this one. Okay, so whenever you're working on making a new family, you when you open up the type properties, it gives you the button up here at the top for duplicate. And we're going to duplicate this one and we're going to call it cable. Okay, handrail cables. Okay, now we are working on the one, um, the new cable one, and we don't mess up an existing one. I've seen people. Um, change the one they already have and then they don't have it anymore so duplicate first and then give it a new name and then edit okay so here's what's going on with this rail the rail has horizontal members and you might only see one over here and when we go to check it the railing when i click edit sure enough there's only one rail okay it's wood cherry rail and it's got a fancy um shape to it but we are going to go and explore a couple more things. We say, okay, now the balusters, this second button is all the vertical objects. And when I click on that for editing, what it says is the main pattern, the repeat pattern that's out here in the middle is um, a colonial post. And then the start post, which is when you first click to start drawing your line for a railing, that's where that first click is the start post. Corner, it's set at newels, and you see a picture of a newel post right over here, about a four and a quarter inch newel post. And when you finish your railing and you click the end of the line, that's your end post. That's listed here as well. And if you drew an L shape or a bend in the line at all anywhere or made a break in the line anywhere, it's going to toss in what's called a corner post. So you could set these up to do what you want. 
whatever post you want in there. So anyway, I just, we're investigating before we change. I'm just looking at what we've got. It's always good to kind of look at what you're dealing with. Okay, let me say, okay. Let's go back and change the top rail first. So we're gonna say edit. The rail one, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it at rail one. And um, you could just change the name to top rail if you felt like it, but I'm not gonna. The profile it's using, well, first it's three feet high. That's normal for a railing. If you need one at three foot six and change that. Offset is zero. That means it's centered. This thing is, your objects are gonna be centered on each other, like the top post and the, the, the verticals, which are your, um, what are those called, balusters? They're gonna be centered. And then all of your cables are gonna be centered. It's good to work with zero offset because it makes things so much easier when you're building these. The profile is a fancy dancy handrail. I'm gonna change that. I might drop down. I'm gonna go look through here and see what I've got. Mm, handrail there. Handrail circular, one and a half inches. That feels like a, a good top rail. You could create yourself a profile, import it and use it here if you want. Doesn't matter, like a big, a flat metal, whatever. The metal, uh, cherry wood, no, I'm going to change this to like a stainless steel or something. So I'm going to go metal, mm -hmm. stainless steel, uh, brush, stainless steel. Good, good, good. I'm going to say, okay, okay. So now I've got stainless steel. Oh, it's appliances? Oh, it's an appliance stainless steel. Eh. I guess stainless steel is stainless steel, so it doesn't matter whatever. I'm going to say, okay. Okay. So now I've changed my top rail to a one and a half inch circular rail. And I'm going to move. You can open these things up so you can see the full name of the profile and stainless steel. So if I, when I hit okay and apply, it changes it over here. Okay. So now we've got a one and a half inch pipe right there going along. So now we need to change all the vertical pieces. So if I highlight this, Go back to edit type. We're going to go to baluster. So look at this. The baluster family that's being used for the repeats every four inches or so, or every six inches, whatever it's set to, I'm going to click on that and set it to, wait for it, all the way at the top, none. So if I say apply, you know, if I hit OK, take a look. Boom, it gets rid of all the verticals. I don't even want them. Now I have to deal with the, the start post, the end post, and the corner posts. So I'm gonna go back to the baluster placement button. I'm gonna come down here and the start post, I'm gonna set that to something like a one inch round. There we go, one inch round. The end post is gonna be a one inch round. And the, um, I'm gonna make the corner posts also one inch rounds, okay? Just work with me here. I'm changing this one, the base offset. I'm just changing it. I'm making sure that it, the base, it's going from the host, which is on the ground or on a stair, and it's going up to the top, which is the handrail, the rail one. And look, you've got your offsets all set to zero. So if I hit OK, it's going to implement that right now. So take a look. That is pretty boring. We don't have all the cables in here yet, but we do have one inch verticals and we have one and a half inch top horizontal, but we need the cables in here, okay? And if I go to look to add cables, watch this, I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna say edit. Now remember, the rail structure are your horizontals and the cables are horizontal, so I'm gonna click on that button. And this is where I need to hit insert button to add all my cables. So if I hit insert, what it does is it throws one in just called new railing. Okay, and I'm going to change that to be cable one. Okay, cable, that's the first cable. And you can check the code in your area, wherever it is, to find out how far apart those cables must be and where, how low the first one needs to be from the ground. You can find out the code in your area and set them appropriately. I'm just going to set mine every six inches for an example, but you just need to check the code in where you're building your building to see what it, these need to be. So check this out. I'm going to set my first one six inches down from that. 
that's going to be two foot six, okay? Offset zero, and it's going to throw a default profile in, okay? That's what it suggests. But if I go to check for a cable, I, I don't have a cable. So if I want, I'm going to go ahead and agree with just default for now. And then I'm going to go make a profile, a, a new a cable, and then use it here as a profile. So I'm going to say, okay. <clears throat> and what it did is it put in a default two inch square, I think. Conk. It's okay. Walk, just walk away from it for a minute. And I'll show you how to add a new cable. To put in a new horizontal, we already have round one and a half inch. What we need to do is duplicate that and change the parameters to be like a, a quarter inch cable or a three eighths inch cable. So here we go. So I'm gonna go down in my browser, my project browser till I get to families. I'm gonna expand it. I'm gonna to come to profiles, okay? Expand profiles and look for handrail circular, okay? Now, I know these little cables are not handrails, but Revit doesn't know that. It thinks we're putting in handrails every six inches or every four inches. It doesn't know. So that's the tool you use. We currently have a one and a half inch circular handrail or a one inch. Neither one of those work for us. So I'm just going to pick either one. Just grab one of them, right click on it and pick duplicate. And I'm going to change the name of it right now. I'm going to make it three eighths inch cable. I'm just going to name it that. So it's a three eighths inch cable. And then I have to double click on it to get its properties to pop up behind my face. And then I'm going to take the properties, the diameter, let me change it right here. Three eighths of an inch. I'm say, okay. So now we've created one that we can use. Does that make sense? Okay. So now if I click on my little rail down here, uh, hand, I'm going to click on edit type. I'm going to go back to the railing structure. And the what it has in there is the default profile. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go get my, the one I just made. Looking for it. There it is. Three eighths inch cable. Boom. Okay. And now I want to duplicate. Now that I've got this correct, I want to duplicate it down for all the different cables. So I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to hit duplicate. Now, what it does, watch this, duplicate. It puts, it pushes the one I had highlighted down and it duplicates above it. So that makes me think, it's like, hmm, what if I started at the bottom and then I could duplicate them up? It would save me some time. Good. So cable rail one is going to be six inches off the ground. C cable two, look at this, cable two is going to be one foot off the ground, okay? Now I can highlight the next one. And when I hit duplicate, boop, it puts it above it, makes it easy for me. So I'm just going to highlight that and make that number three is at one foot six. Okay. And it remembers the profile so that I don't have to keep doing it every time. Now I'm going to highlight the cable three and hit duplicate and make that four. And then I'm going to make this at two feet. Okay. And highlight that one, duplicate, and make that number five. And again, check the code in your area. I don't want you copying me and getting in trouble. Six inch, one foot, one and a half, two, two and a half, three is the top. Okay, so if I hit, oh, uh, wait, let's change the, the uh, material on those cables. What kind of um, stainless steel cables? Ooh, that'll be nice. Now, I should have done that and then duplicated it so I wouldn't have to keep doing this every time. So I'm just gonna click on that and it's it stays on stainless because the last it stays on the last one you just used. So you have to kind of do the game of click the button, hit okay, wait for it. Okay, so now I've got stainless steel cables, brush stainless steel across the top and I've got these in the right place. So wait for it, I'm gonna hit okay, here we go. Boom, we got a cable rail, just like that. Now, let me show you a couple tricks. I'm going to edit the path, okay? If you, so you know that railings can't be two separate lines. Like, watch this. I'm going to 
this cable railings right there. And if I draw another line like over here, it's it's gonna fail because I check the box and it goes, eh, there's an error pops up that says you can't do that. It has to be a continuous rail. If you want two separate ones, draw a separate one. Okay. So it, it doesn't allow you to leave gaps, but it does allow you to change direction. I'm just gonna change this direction to go down this way. And I'm gonna keep on drawing and go back this way. Now I'm gonna show you guys something. Check the box. So I just made an L shape. Now take a look. This is a start post over here, end post over here. And wherever there's a change of direction, it gives you a corner post. But you're gonna say, well, what if I wanted another post out here in the middle? Okay, you can do that. You just have to break the railing at that point. So watch, I'm gonna highlight it. And then I'm gonna come up here to edit path. And you don't break the rail, you break the path. So I'm gonna click this little tool right here, split element, okay? It's on the modify tab, split element. And if I want to, I can pop, pop I can break it in a couple places put one right here, break this in a couple, You wherever you break it, you'll see the lines, they're separate lines, okay? And at each of those little endpoints, you're gonna get, wherever there's a break, you're gonna get a corner post. So take a look, boom, just like that. Is that sweet or what? So now we've got a cable railing with corner posts and um, end posts, top, we, we got it all, all right? So my friends, that is how you make a cable railing for your projects if you need one. All right, that's all for now. I hope you have a fantastic day. And until we meet again, happy reveting. All right, bye-bye.